Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Let's Go Live on this beautiful Tuesday morning. I'm glad that you're joining us to pray. My name is Monica. Good morning. I'm Kate. Good morning. I'm Fred. And we're happy that you're here to pray with us this morning. Um, it's great to take this time each week, and we really appreciate you all joining us and praying with us. And um, we're going to um, follow the four steps of Letzio Divina. So if you know someone who's never done it, invite them to watch. It'll be uploaded to YouTube later, and it's just another way to sit with the Lord. And it's just really important, I feel, for us to take this time to sit in His silence and hear Him speaking to us. And this is just a really, really beautiful way to do it. So let's begin with a little prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come into our lives. Come into our rooms and our hearts at this moment. Teach us to pray. Teach us to be open. Grant us wisdom and courage to listen to the words that you give us. Speak to us, Lord. Bring us your peace. Bring us your calm. Bring us your guidance for this day, for this week, for the rest of our lives. We praise you. We thank you for all the blessings you've given us. We lay at your feet all who are sick and suffering right now, all who have died recently, all who are about to get that diagnosis that's going to be devastating to them. Just let them feel your hand and your presence in everything that comes their way, everything that comes our way. Come Holy Spirit and teach us to pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so we are going to be reflecting on this past Sunday's gospel, which is rather lengthy and my story is too, but <laughs> um, it's the full gospel because we read the full gospel in mass. You know, yeah. there's abbreviated gospels, but I just love if you missed Father's homily, I think go back and watch that too. It was just really, really rich. It just really gave us a lot to hold on to and to grow with. And that's what we're here for, right? Right. So Kate's going to read the full of the gospel for us right now. Okay. This is. Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. When he, while he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid. Just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people wailing, weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, why this commotion and weeping? 
The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. Amen. I like the long one better, too. <laughs> yeah, it's so great. And that's just one of my favorite scriptures. Mm -hmm. to, I can really put myself on the ground at his feet and just thinking if I could just touch. Amen. I could just touch. Oh, good stuff. Okay. So now I'm going to read um, my modern day parable, the little version that kind of was given to me. And um, I hope that you can put yourself somewhere in this story as well. <clears throat> the title is Not Giving Up on You. <clears throat> Excuse me. When Tabitha had crossed over the threshold from dependent to adulthood, a large crowd gathered around her to celebrate. There was what had become the norm of drinking and other substances at the party, of which her parents did not approve. Seeing her, they fell at her feet and pleading earnestly with her, saying, Daughter, you are nearly at the point of death. Please come lay all of this down that you may get well and live. She went off with them to rehab, and a large crowd who had followed the same path pressed upon her. There was a counselor who had been afflicted with dependency for 12 years. She had suffered greatly, just like Tabitha, at the hands of many doctors. Tabitha's parents had spent all they had emotionally, physically, and monetarily. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. As the counselor spoke to their daughter, Tabitha's parents came up behind her and touched her. Her father wrapped his big arms around Tabitha and held her close. I'll never let you go, my sweet girl, he whispered. Her mother held her hand and said, you are going to be well. I just know it, my darling daughter. The counselor from the center cupped Tabitha's tear-stained face in her hands and held her gaze. Looking deeply into her hurting brown eyes, now dimmed by all the struggles of her young 21 years, she spoke to Tabitha as softly and calmly as the mist of an evening shower that settles the dust of the day. I will walk beside you all the way. I have been in your shoes but I did not know the tremendous love of a father and a mother. Know you have the three of us. If you but touch that spirit of courage and wisdom, you will be cured. Immediately her flow of tears dried up. She felt in her body the sincere desire to be healed of her affliction. Tabitha was aware at once that the power had gone out of these people, father, mother, counselor. She turned around in the crowd and said, they touched me. They didn't let me go in shame. They didn't give up on me. But her parents said to Tabitha, you see how the crowd is pressing upon you and yet you say they touched me? Tabitha brushed back her matted black hair that had once shone like the silky reflection of the moon on still waters at night. She looked around to see who all had gathered and to be sure it was her father's arms and her mother's hands that held her. Another young woman who had stayed off to the side pacing the perimeter of the room realized what had happened. She was small in stature and at first glance seemed like a mere child, but a closer look showed lines of hard living on her face. She shyly approached with eyes of fear and trembling hands. She fell down before them and told the whole truth of her journey. Tabitha's father released one arm and took her into their embrace of hope. He said to her, daughter, this spirit of truth will save you. Go toward that peace. Keep reaching out and touching those who are here to help you and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the center's office arrived and said, You're not his daughter. Why trouble this family any longer? They have enough worry. Disregarding the warning message that was reported with good intentions for Tabitha and her parents, Tabitha's dad said to the program administrator, Do not be afraid. Just have faith. Do you not allow anyone to accompany these small, I mean, these ones except their father, mother, and brother? This small, shy woman caught sight of the officials and began weeping and wailing loudly. 
She was worried she had caused a commotion and would be separated from the others. One bystander, who had remained stoic and silent throughout the entire account, encounter, decided to speak up. She really isn't so bad. In fact, she's mostly asleep. <clears throat> and began, some began to ridicule her. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then the director took her out. He took along Tabitha, her father and mother, and the counselor who was with them, and entered the room where there was calm and quiet. He took both the young women by the hand and said, Young ladies, I say to you, you have arrived. The girls' spirits rose, and they embraced each other. They were utterly astounded at their own transformation, now that they had finally been touched inside their hearts. The director gave strict orders that no one should interfere with this great progress and said they should be given something to eat. Amen. The end. So reach awesome. out and touch somebody who needs you. Let them know that they're not alone. That's my message. <laughs> Good job, Fred. <clears throat> That's great. Okay, so now we will step back again to the scripture, to the gospel passage, and we will begin our four step process of Lexio Divina. So hopefully you can turn off phones and distractions and escape the room for a little while. Let's listen to him. Letio Divina is divine reading. It is an encounter with God. The key elements are to allow the Lord to lead this prayer time. Be open to hearing God speak through his living word. Surrender to his message for you at this moment. Accept the challenge to wrestle with and grow into the word that God gives you and allow his word to nourish and transform you. Reading the sacred word is listening to the voice of God. Listen deeply with your heart. Be present in each movement. Take time to savor this process. Be attentive to your breathing. Let go of distractions. And open yourself to this encounter with God. Our first movement is Letzio, which means reading. We will read the scripture passage slowly. Listen for a word or a small phrase that beckons, unnerves, disturbs, and shimmers. Gently focus on that word in silence. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction.
Our second movement is meditatio, which means reflecting. We will read the same scripture passage again. Focus on the word or phrase that shimmers and accept any images, feelings, and memories that stir in your heart. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her daughter, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. Our third movement is oratio, which means responding. We will read the same scripture passage again. Listen for what connects with your life and record the prayer, awareness, or call to action that arises from your reflection. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. 
Okay, this is the point where we share the one word or phrase that's been given to us. Fred, what'd you get? I was given the word whole truth. Ooh. Kate? Pat was given the words fell down. Fell down. Hmm. I was given the word affliction. So I invite everyone watching to share the word or phrase that's been given to you, and then after the fourth movement, we'll come back to discuss. Thank you. Our fourth movement is contemplatio, which means resting. We will read the same scripture passage one last time. Slow your thoughts and rest in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We offer gratitude for his presence in this time of prayer, stillness, and communion with him and with one another. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction.
As we conclude this prayer time, gently connect with your breathing and become aware of your surroundings once again. And we will share the great wisdom that was given to everyone. Thank you all for sharing. We had lots and lots of words. I love all the variety that's coming out. So, Kate, you go first and tell us about fell down. Okay. Um, I was just sort of putting myself into the scriptures and thinking of that lady and and how she was uh, almost scared when Jesus touched her and was a little scared of him. And I thought about, you know, how we always try to... She had been afflicted for many years, and I thought how we always try to take on our own problems and, and solve them ourselves sometimes. And I thought about that. Um, I think it was something Father said about how we're supposed to turn to Jesus first and feel his peace. And I thought about falling down at his feet. I could just imagine myself doing that because, as I told you earlier, I had an um, incident yesterday that I was just so worried about. And God spoke to me as I laid in the bed last night and said, you know, just fall down, fall down and be with me. And mm, so. Beautiful. I, that's not exactly how it should come out. That's how it came out. <laughs> I get it. Well, your word was fell down, so yeah. fall down, yeah. Then you're not in control. Quit trying to hold it up. That's hold right. Yourself yeah. Up. That's yeah. It. yeah. Beautiful. Frederick, would you? Well, I had a couple words given to me. Fell down was one of them. Fell, fell was one of them. Yeah. And uh, the whole truth. Oh. And, uh, this lady was in desperation. Okay, she, she couldn't stand on her own anymore. She fell. She didn't kneel. She didn't prostrate herself. She fell down. She couldn't stand on her own. She went to Jesus. And, it's, you know, when we go to confession, when I go to confession, I'm confessing this now. Okay, <laughs> uh, I tell the truth. Good. It's yeah. a good story. Is it, but is it the whole truth? Uh, Are we leaving any part of the story out? Probably okay. so. We have to tell the whole truth. Mm -hmm. That's so hard. in desperation, we go we're going to Jesus. We're falling on our knees. We can't take this anymore. Right. Okay, we yeah. fell on our knees. And we're trying to go to Jesus and, and tell, just lay it out and tell him the whole truth. Yeah. And uh, it's like going mm -hmm. to confession. And because of our faith in the daughter's faith here, it saved her. Mm -hmm. It's like Father gives us uh, absolution and confession. He sa saves us. But we have to tell them the whole truth. Otherwise, we might feel a little guilty when we come out of confession. I didn't say everything, okay? <laughs> but we told them the truth. So uh, we got to fall on our knees. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got to fall. We this got to get on your knees and kneel down in the confessional. This get, we can't we can't do this on our own anymore. We can't hold ourselves up anymore. Yeah. And uh, that's what yeah. that's what I was feeling. That that we have to we can't do prostrate this ourselves in front of God and uh, just. Western. Tell the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and he knows he knows Call his name and he knows he what's in our heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. But speaking it. Yeah, and speaking, speaking the whole it. thing. If you do that in confession, you come out feeling like mm -hmm. a brand new person. Amen. So if I don't come out feeling like a brand new person, then I probably <laughs> withheld <laughs> something. I gotta turn around and go right back in. Okay. That's my story. That's good. That's good. That was good. So that's kind of related to mine because I was given affliction and the whole truth because what came to me was, you know, what is what are my afflictions? You know, I don't have, you know, a physical ailment like her, thank God, but I'm, I'm afflicted. I've got a lot of things that need to be cured. And so I realized what I'm going to do this week is really work on sitting and telling Jesus the whole truth, yeah. naming it all. Mm -hmm. And then, and then he's gonna bring bring about healing. So that's my goal for the week. So Amen. Good. That's good. It's gonna be a good rough stuff. one. Very, very <laughs> good rich stuff, people. Thank yeah. you all for sharing. We had so many great words, and maybe one day we can all you all can be here with us. Um, we'll do a lectio all together in the gym. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. If we had like two hundred people, and we all did it <laughs> and shared. I just think that would be a really great experience. But in the meantime. I'm just so happy that y'all come and pray with us on yes. Tuesdays. So we hope everyone has a blessed week. Yes. And safe. a happy and safe 4th of July. Amen. And happy we'll see you July. next week. Bye.
Bye. Let the sun shine in our hearts. Amen. Amen.